going to talk about the, the enemy within, the insider threat. But first, we're going to look at ransomware and why that is actually uh, potentially good, because it will enable us to understand our, our, our risks internally and expose where we're potentially at risk from the other insiders. So this is a, this is a quote from Kevin Beaumont. Did a lot of work around understanding malware, the Locky variant in particular. So as you can see, 4,000 uh, new infections an hour, 100,000 a day. You know, ransomware is an epidemic. You know, this, this quote was roughly two years ago, and these levels have not dropped in that time. So it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. But what it does is because of all these infections, it enables us to understand the weak points within our organization because ransomware leverages the permissions of a user to firstly encrypt locally and then users network shares to encrypt across the network and file servers. So this is why we can then use this knowledge to lock down and prevent any further insider threats. Um, so, as I say, ransomware is dangerous because it leverages those users. Now, we've conducted two uh, studies with the Polynom Institute over the past two years. Now, 62% of users are saying they've got too much access. Users never say they've got too much access. Users always want more access. We want to be able to access whatever we want at whatever time. And this is half the problem. If a user is saying they've got too much access, then there's got to be a problem. The fact that less than 30% of organizations are enforcing least privileges, we're creating our own risk. We're giving people too much access. So we're, we're essentially asking for trouble. And then to compound it further, we're not actually monitoring what people are doing within organizations. There's no file access monitoring, what people are touching. We don't understand our data, where it resides and who's got access to it. Because if we understand our data, if we understand who's got access to it, if we understand the sensitivity of that data, we can then start to enforce protection around that so that we reduce that risk of, of an insider threat or a breach from outside. So what's changed in relation to, to let's say, ransomware? Bitcoin. It's allowed people to uh, monetize at scale anonymously. You know, Bitcoin currently is, is £1,000. Now, hopefully no one's been affected by ransomware, but if you think of an average uh, ransomware infection, 500 Bitcoins to get your data back, 500 Bitcoins, one Bitcoin's a thousand pounds. It's half a million. 4,000 an hour, 100,000 a day. You only need a couple to pay, and you're very rich. Not that I'm advocating anyone doing this as a, as a job, <laughs> um, but this is why. Because ransomware has been around for years. The delivery mechanisms, phishing, they've been around for years. This is what changed the game, that ability to anonymously monetize it. So this is the first of our four insiders that we've created at Veronis, Malware Molly. They're all bad names, I apologize. Uh, but Malware Molly, we've all got them. Those people who receive emails, click on the attachments that are infected with malware, download browser plugins, get that email about, ooh, free cost of coffee, oh, I'll have a bit of that, click on that link, and then infecting themselves. We've all got these people. And unless we lock down the permissions, ransomware will propagate. Okay? So, oops, apologies. There we go. As I said earlier, ransomware is the only threat that lets us know it's there. It's the only insider threat that lets us know it's there. And we should use this, I know it's very easy to see, we should use this, um, this ability of ransomware letting us know it's there to help down, help close down any gaps in our permissions. So, this is typically what you see when you've been affected by ransomware. Money maker, But then we've got three other insiders. We've got disgruntled Dan. We've all got these people. Never happy, always miserable. Maybe they had a bad performance review. The world's against them. But what are these people going to do if they ever get a new job? Before they hand in their resignation, they're going to take every file they've ever worked on because it's theirs. They may even delete confidential information because that's the sort of person they are. But currently, we don't monitor any activity. We don't know what these people are doing. We don't understand what they've got access to. So these people are massively dangerous to our organizations because we've got no understanding of access and data. And the perfect example, this is Greg Chung. 
Used to work for Boeing. Worked for Boeing for 30 years. Stole 250,000 sensitive documents. Estimated value, 2 billion. Not bad. Got caught by the FBI, 16 years. 250,000 documents over 30 years. No one had a clue. Thankfully, he got caught. I don't know whether two billion was worth it, maybe. Um, 16 years. Um, but this is, this is what can happen from a disgruntled employee if we don't understand, A, what they've got access to, B, where our sensitive data is, and see what they're doing with this access. Then we've got abusive admin Andy. Told you the names are good. Um, we've all got administrators, but do we understand what those accounts have got access to? Do we understand what these people are doing with these, with these privileged access? Yeah, you know, we all need administrators, but we need to ensure that they're using these powers for good and not evil. Okay? And a perfect example, Citibank. I'm not going to read the quote, I'll get out of the way. But this employee thought he was going to get fired. He obviously did after this. Um, but he took down 90% of Citibank's network through deleting routers conf uh, routers co or multiple routers configs. 90% of Citibank's network. Unfettered access. Who monitors the admins? Well, according to the stats we saw earlier from the Pondon Institute, no one. Well, just over one in three companies. We allow these people lots of access, but we don't understand what they're doing with it. Which leads us on to hijacked Hillary, probably the scariest of all the four insiders. Um, hijacked Hillary. Um, this person, again, could click on that free cost of coffee link, gets infected by uh, malware. Those credentials are then utilized by a you know, corporate espionage state to then leverage this person's credentials. Now, we already know that 62% of organizations, employees, think they've got too much access. We also know that we're not monitoring what people are doing with this access. We also know that most organizations haven't the foggiest on what data they've got, whether it's stale, whether it's sensitive, where it resides, et cetera. And probably the most famous um, usage of a hijacked account is, this is what greeted Sony. We've all heard of the Sony hack. Um, now, according to the Guardians of Peace who claimed that they'd done this, they were in Sony's network for a year. A year. With hijacked Hillary's permissions. Imagine what you could steal in a year with no one knowing, because we don't audit it. You know, Amy Pascal, she got fired. We know six movies were stolen. We've probably all read the emails about Angelina Jolie and various other people. No one knew they were stolen in there for a year, because we don't understand what people are doing, what access they've got, what they're touching. So it's not all bad news, um, thankfully. There's stuff we can do. And the first thing is understand. Understand detection. You know, currently, we don't even register on any breach detection within seconds and minutes. Only 10% are in days and weeks. You know, 70% are in months and years. Sony was a year. This is what we need to do better. Detection. Understand what's happening within our networks, within our file systems. So, for honest, we put together um, a three-phase methodology. It's technology agnostic agnostic even, and detect, prevent, sustain. Understand your environment. Understand who's got access to what. Understand who's touching what data. And once you do that, you'll then put preventative projects in place to reduce that access, to move stale data out, to lock down sensitive data, and then thirdly, to sustain it by ensuring the business recertifies, that, recertifies access. You don't want to spend a year going through a preventative phase to then go, ah, we didn't put anything in place to, to sustain it and have to do it again. This is why a nice, simple three-phase model can help you prevent that, that insider threat, that breach. So a bit more detail. So detect, as I say, understand your users, your groups, your permissions, your infrastructure. Understand your data. What's sensitive? You know, GDPR is coming, so you're going to have to understand your data. You're going to have to understand where your sensitive data resides, whether it's PII, PCI, any other acronym you want to throw in there. Um, 
And then once you've understood that, understand your accounts, your privileged accounts, your service accounts, your executive accounts. You know, whale fishing's massive. So if you understand your executives, you can then start to have a better idea of what they've got access to, what people are going to try and, mm. and go after. And then if we audit that activity, everyone's activity within the organisation, we can then baseline users' activity. And if we baseline the activity, if people then start to act like disgruntled Dan, we're going to take all that information, we can then alert. We can alert on that anomalous behaviour. We can also alert when ransomware takes over and starts encrypting our, our files across our network. And then at the back end of that, we can put preventative measures in place to, to kill SIF's connection so it doesn't propagate. Um, but ultimately, once we've done that, we can then prioritise where we are overexposed. <coughs> Which then leads us to the prevent phase. So when, once we've detected our issues, understood what we, what we didn't know about our data, we can then prevent it. We can lock down the sensitive data. We can move or archive our stale data, our stale sensitive data. We can delete it. We can then start to make nice, simple changes, you know, fix your inconsistent permissions first, but then eliminate global access groups. Why does everyone need access? Why does authenticated users need access? We're creating rods for our, for our own back. We don't need to do this. Simplify permissions, modify and read. We, don't, we shouldn't have unique permissions. Mm -hmm. Direct access. It's harder to manage. And then utilize the audit trail to identify data owners. It's the business's job to grant and revoke access. Let them do that and then recertify. And then as we move on to the sustain phase, we ensure that we continuously monitor. Mm -hmm. We ensure that data owners recertify permissions. We ensure that we quarantine, we automatically archive that stale data so we keep that least privilege access. So ransomware, it's an epidemic, epidemic even. It's not going anywhere. The good news about ransomware is it shows us how soft our centers are. Mm -hmm. If we flip security from outside in to inside out, secure your data first, your permissions, and then work outward in a layered approach. Hijacked Hillary, disgruntled Dan, abusive admin Andy, we need to be aware of those. And it's all about the data. Any, every breach is about your data. Three-phase approach, detect, prevent, sustain.